Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss yet another important concept from Lagrange's mean value theorem, right? And here we have a very important problem uh, in which we have to prove that for any quadratic function uh, px square plus qx plus r, the value of theta in Lagrange's uh, uh, theorem is always half, right? irrespective of the values of p, q, r and h uh, may be, right? So let us first see uh, what is this uh, problem all about, right? So uh, before uh, taking this problem, uh, let us first take the statement of Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, in terms of this parameter theta right uh, which we are talking about uh, in this problem so we have usually uh, seen that when we define uh, lagrange's mean value theorem uh, we take a function y is equal to f of x right and we define this function in the interval uh, a comma b right now here uh, let us replace this b by uh, a plus h right where h is some quantity uh, which is uh, uh, greater than uh, zero right so now our interval it takes the form a and a plus h right so now we'll uh, de uh, define uh, lagrange's mean value theorem in this interval that is uh, a comma a plus h right so Lagrange's mean value theorem says that uh, if a function y is equal to f of x is defined in this interval a comma a plus h and if this function is uh, continuous in the interval uh, closed interval a and a plus h and the function is derivable or differentiable in the open interval a comma a plus h uh, then uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem says that there must exist some point x is equal to c which belongs to this interval a comma a plus h such that f prime of c is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a divided by uh, the difference of a plus h and a is simply h right. So Lagrange's mean value theorem gives us the derivative at this point x is equal to c as f prime of c which is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h and remember that b is equal to a plus h right. Now see this point uh, c it lies between a and uh, a plus h. In fact, C lies between A and uh, B and we are now taking uh, B as A plus H. Now let us uh, define a quantity theta, right? Let us define a quantity theta such that theta lies between 0 and 1, right? And uh, uh, this theta is a very important quantity uh, in defining Lagrange's mean value theorem in somewhat different way. So now let us uh, multiply this uh, inequality throughout by h, right? So we have here 0 because 0 times h is uh, 0. Then uh, we have theta h here and h times 1 is h, right? So here h is a positive quantity. Now, uh, let us add a throughout this inequality. So, we'll add a uh, throughout this inequality. So, we have a plus 0, then we have a plus theta h, and here we have a plus h, right? So, we have a plus 0 a, and a plus theta h uh, can be replaced by c, right? So, c can be taken as a, plus theta h. So here we have c and here we have a plus h, right? 
So theta is an important quantity in Lagrange's mean value theorem. Uh, when we uh, redefine Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, in the interval a comma a plus h. So now if we replace this c by a plus theta h then Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, takes the form f prime of a plus theta h is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h right okay so now let us come to this uh, problem so here we have to prove that for any quadratic function so let us call uh, this function as f of x so f of x is px square plus qx plus r the value of theta now this theta is this theta that is uh, uh, lying between 0 and 1 and c is equal to a plus theta h right so we are talking about this theta so the value of theta in Lagrange's theorem is always half whatever be the value of p q r h may be right so here uh, we have to uh, prove that theta is equal to half whatever be the value of p q r and h right so let us see so now let us apply uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem to this function in the interval uh, a comma a plus h right so that we can uh, make use of this form right so this expression can be used uh, when we take uh, the interval as a comma a plus h uh, where uh, this theta uh, it lies between uh, 0 and uh, 1 right so now this function f of x uh, being a polynomial function so this function is obviously continuous right in the interval a comma a plus h right so fx being a polynomial function uh, it is continuous in this uh, interval because all polynomial functions are continuous in the set of real numbers right and uh, uh, this function is obviously uh, differentiable in the interval uh, that is open interval a comma a plus h right so the derivative of f of x is f prime of x so this is 2px plus q right the derivative of x square is 2x and the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of r is 0 uh, being a uh, constant so Lagrange's mean value theorem says that this function this quadratic function is continuous and differentiable so there must exist some point c uh, belonging to this interval such that uh, we have this relation that is this one f prime of a plus theta h is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h so now uh, let us uh, use this relation right so replacing this x by a plus theta h uh, we have f prime of a plus theta h as uh, 2p times a plus theta h plus q right so this is the 2p a and here we have 2p theta h plus q right so the value of f prime of a plus theta h is given by this expression right so now f of a plus h so let us find f of a plus h so f of a plus h can be obtained by replacing x by a plus h right so when we take x is equal to a plus h in this expression we have p a plus h square plus q here we have a plus h plus r right now let us simplify this expression we have p here we have a square plus 2h plus h square and here we have qa plus qh plus r 
right now multiplying uh, these quantities with p we have p a square plus uh, 2 a h p plus p h square plus q a plus q h plus r right and let us take f of a so f of a uh, can be obtained by taking uh, x is equal to a in this expression that is in this function so we have p a square plus q a plus r right so now we have obtained f prime of a plus theta h f of a plus h and f of a right and let us substitute these values in this uh, expression so now we have uh, for this we have uh, 2p a plus 2p theta h plus q and here we have f of a plus h so we have p a square 2a h p then we have p h square plus q a plus q h plus r and then we have minus f of a so we can now write minus uh, p a square minus q a q a then we have minus r divided by h right and uh, from here we see that these two quantities get cancelled then q a and q a get cancelled and r and r get cancelled so we have uh, we can now multiply this h uh, to this quantity we have 2 p a h plus 2 p uh, theta h square plus q h and here uh, we have uh, 2 a h p then we have p h square and then we have here q h okay so now uh, we have this expression so now we can see that this term and this term get cancelled then qh and qh also get cancelled so we are left with only these two terms that is 2p uh, theta h square and here we have p h square right so now this h square and h square get cancelled and p and p get cancelled so we are left with 2 theta is equal to 1 so theta is equal to half right and we have to prove that the value of theta in Lagrange's theorem is always half right irrespective of the values of p q r and h